podcast that celebrates the wonderfully diverse community of swimmers and fantastic swimming opportunities that exist on the Isle of Wight off the south coast of England. Welcome to the podcast. I'm Sandy Cicognani. In 2019, I started the group Outdoor Swimming Isle of Wight as I wanted to find people to swim with in the sea. Since then, I've been on an amazing swimming journey, meeting some wonderful people who share my passion for swimming. I founded a social enterprise to support and encourage people to swim in the sea, trained to be an open water coach, developed the concept of a sea cafe and have brought the sport of Longecote, renamed sea hiking, to the place where I live. I'm part of the outside research study team based at Sussex University, looking at outdoor swimming as a nature-based social prescribing intervention for depression and I work in the voluntary sector on the Isle of Wight. For the Love of Swimming is also the name of a series of community events that aim to share information and inspiration and to connect people through swimming. So if you're lucky enough to live on or visit the island, look out for these events coming soon. Follow us on all the usual social media channels and don't forget to subscribe to the podcast for more personal swimming stories. Okay, so today I'm with Jenny Ball, who is a bit of a legend, a swimming legend, certainly in ride on the Isle of Wight. Um, Welcome, Jenny. Hello, Sandy. And thank you for coming on this podcast. Um, I'm going to start really, well, first of all, can you tell us what sort of a swimmer you are? I'm mainly a distance swimmer and open water. That just came about by accident, really. I didn't realise I was a distance swimmer and that I could just keep going because I'm certainly not very fast. Okay. I was going to say, I I didn't do a proper introduction. What I was going to do is start with some very short questions and then we'll dig a little bit deeper. But what I wanted to say to the listeners is you are a bit of a legend and certainly an inspiration to me. And it's down to you that I joined the, the Ride Masters. Uh, you are, you won't mind me saying that you are 85 and you are still competing actively in swimming competitions, but we'll get onto that in a little while. We'll start with these quick fire questions. If So do you prefer sea, river, pool or lake swimming? I'm not a fan of rivers and lakes, so I haven't enjoyed that, especially when they're brackish where they join the sea. I much prefer the salt around my lips than the river water. But I have done some river swimming um, in the Thames and abroad. Never lakes. Okay, thank you. And long or short distance? Long distance mainly. My longest distance was probably swimming from Gozo to Malta, which I believe is about 6k. Thank you. And what's your favourite stroke? Oh, front crawl every time. And now you might think this is a strange question, but what would you say is your essential swimming kit? What does it comprise of? Well, you need a costume. If you're racing in a pool, we wear knee, what we call knee suits which and uh, compression suits, which are quite difficult to get on and off for racing in a pool. For swimming in the sea, I prefer that kind of suit, a wetsuit in the winter and a rash vest in the spring and autumn. And, of course, hat and goggles and dark goggles in the sun and probably clearer goggles in the pool. Okay. And do you have a particular luxury item that you wouldn't do without? Probably my chamois, actually. Um, Absolutely excellent. When you're swimming all weekend, you get a very soggy towel. Take a chamois along, a proper swimming chamois, and the towel remains dry and you can wring out something like a pint of water out of your chamois. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to go into a little bit of detail. Let's start at the beginning. When, where, how did you learn to swim? Well, I learnt just after the war, when the pools first opened, and I found a report uh, hidden away in the attic, which at the age of 10 said that Jennifer would swim very soon. I was then able to go to the beach in the, on the East Coast because we lived in Ipswich and I have a picture of myself standing on the beach in a woolly knitted costume, age about eight. And I thought, when I found that, my goodness, I was destined to be a sea swimmer. <laughs> and did you continue sort of swimming all your life from that point? 
I have swum all my life. I went to a school which had a pool which was unheated and we were thrown into it in May. The temperature was probably about 12 degrees. Um, and yes, I used to cycle down to the East Coast, down what is now the A12, to swim at Felixstowe. <laughs> And I've always been drawn to water. We moved to Birmingham when I was in my teens and there were pools there. So I've always swum, but not competitively until I was age 50. Oh, can you tell us more about how you got into competitive swimming? Well, the whole story, and I hope it's not too long, is that Vivian Cherriman, who was um, an, a, lived on the Isle of Wight with her husband, Leonard, she was an icon in Masters. She, she was instrumentally in getting master swimming in England and happened to live on the Isle of Wight and we swam in a competition I think it was probably run by Sea Close Swimming Club way way back and um, she said to me at the time you have got to swim master swimming and I said what's that and she said here's an entry form for the nationals it's in Oxford and I said oh where will I stay needless to say I didn't go but that's how it happened. I was persuaded to go. I suppose you could say I was talent spotted, but I'm not fast by any means. <laughs> and that's what you're continuing to do with other people, aren't you? Continuing to encourage people, other people to swim. Probably, yes. Yes, that's um, yes. I, I, I just want them to get the enjoyment from it that I got because I've had so much enjoyment over the last 30 odd years and I just want to pass that on. Mm. Oh, and what, what is it you like about competitive swimming? I'm not really sure. I think probably the companionship, meeting friends. I've got friends from all over the world I've met at competitions and it keeps me mobile and it makes me train. Not that I train very hard, but it does, I have to do some swimming to compete. And I do enjoy competing. I don't mind if I don't win. It's easy to win when you haven't got much competition in your 90th decade. <laughs> I was going to say, and, and tell us about, you've just won some more medals this weekend, haven't you? Yes, that was the British Masters, which encompasses um, England, Scotland and Wales and Ireland. It's always at a 50 metre pool. And um, it's very heavily subscribed. Uh, you have to, to qualify to get into it, but the qualifying times as you get older become a lot easier. So although I won all my events, I was quite pleased because I actually bettered times which I'd set earlier this year. Excellent. Thank you. And um, can we go back again um, to when you first started competing? Do you remember the first competition that you did and how was that? I do. I took myself off to London and I think I went on my own and I booked a very dodgy B&B &B somewhere <laughs> and I met somebody on a bus who looked like she was a swimmer and were going in the same direction so she looked after me and uh, yes, nobody knew who I was but I was picked up being an isolated swimmer by a London club and invited to join them. I can't obviously train with them, but I did swim with them for a short while and uh, they've been friends ever since. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, and what would you say um, has been your greatest achievement in the swimming world? What are you most proud of? Well, one would be swimming from Gozo to Malta amongst the jellyfish, which I avoided. Um, I'm not sure really probably the international events and probably swimming in the Eindhoven Canal in the Europeans and overtaking a Dutch lady in her own canal and getting a silver medal. <laughs> Otherwise, I can't really pick anything out. I just enjoy the whole thing in the pool and in the open water. Excellent. And what would you say keeps you going? Why, why are you still doing it at 85? Because I can, mm. in a word. There's, um, I, I just cannot imagine life without swimming. 
and the people that I've met and know and encourage and who encourage me, I've had a lot of encouragement myself. And that's what I like to pass on. Yeah. And and you're still actively teaching. How how did you get into swimming teaching? Tell me more about that. Well, that was at West White Club, who I owe everything to, because my children were taught to swim there, and I was watching them one night, and the chairman of the club, who sadly is no longer with us, said to me, you should not be sitting there watching, you should be teaching. There's a course coming up, the club will pay your fees, off you go. And that's where it started. And I did a preliminary course at the Westridge Pool, and just went from there. Went on to do teachers, advanced teachers, which has now become level two. And I was also encouraged to teach adults at West White by the late Shirley Miles. She had tremendous empathy for adults. And I think this is probably what you need because they vary so much in their ability and their experience and their past experiences of swimming. I also taught at West White Mothers and Babies and then moved to the Heights, teaching mothers and babies for a number of years and adults. And then suddenly Ride popped up. I'm not quite sure how (laughs) things changed, (laughs) but I love it at Ride. Mm, excellent, and we love having you there. So it's great that you're you're with us now and Ryan. Uh, what 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 else can I ask you? What, what have, have you got? Any new challenges coming up? Anything else this year? Well, it's not entirely new, but we haven't done it for a few years because of COVID, and then sadly the Queen's funeral interrupted the Serpentine swim, which is a mile round the Serpentine. Well, I could do two, but a mile's enough. Uh, I'm looking forward to that in September. Then there'll be the Nationals. There are Worlds this year, but they're in Japan, and I don't think at 85 I really want to be <laughs> in Japan eating sushi every day. So I'm not quite sure. Probably the Europeans next year, but we don't yet know where they'll be. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Thank you. Um, and what else have I got on my list of questions? The best place, your favourite place that you've ever swum? Croatia. Oh, it's lovely. Fantastic. There, it? mm. I did one of the swim trek holidays there and it was just amazing. Yeah, excellent. Uh, and a regular swim spot? Where do, where do you like most on the Isle of Wight? Indoors or outdoors, Sandy? Either. <laughs> well, obviously, ride pool. I think it's lovely. The roof opening in the summer and the deeper water is ideal for teaching adults and for swimming in. And locally, it's a toss-up between Lake Beach and Seagrove Bay. Can you tell me a little bit about when you first learnt to swim out of your depth? Well, swimming out of my depth in the pool has never been a problem. But swimming out of my depth in the sea, I would only go parallel to the shore and I could touch the bottom. And then one day I was challenged, I was nearly 60, and I was challenged to swim out to a yacht. And I thought, no, I don't do that. Yes, you've got to come, the kettle's on, we'll come with you. And I did. And the hardest part, of course, anybody who knows, is getting on and off a moving yacht (laughs) up a vertical metal ladder. (laughs) But I did it. And then I think the following year was when I did the first peer-to-peer swim. And in those days, we jumped off the pier, and that was something else. That That, must have been quite scary, wasn't it? Even at low tide, you went a long way down, and you thought you're never going to come up. (laughs) Um, It's now been uh, changed to a beach start for health and safety reasons, but we all ran along to the end of the pier and jumped off where the fishermen fished from. Oh, wow. (laughs) Um, And that that was it. And then after that, I was swimming the Solent, and did that several times. Hmm. So the Solent swim, well, you've done a, a few different crossings from, of the Solent, haven't you? Well, the main one used to be from Ride Sands to South Sea, and that was always escorted by a boat and a rib with the ride inshore. 
but that became difficult because they needed the vehicles obviously on standby but we always did it as a solo swim never as a mass swim and it was very very well organized by the late Gordon Osborne I did that six times between the age of 60 and 72 my last swim being when I was 72 and now that route has been banned by the harbour master because he doesn't want swimmers all over the Solent to cross the entry to his harbour so it now goes from Gosport so I was probably the last and oldest lady <laughs> to do that crossing <laughs> and swimming out of my depth now doesn't pose a problem don't think about it the only thing you think about is jellyfish and I believe there are a few at the moment <laughs> yes I think there are more and more as the years go on aren't there so, and, and you're thinking of doing the Solent again, possibly? I would love to do it at the ripe old age of 85, but I think the dates this year are not going to be convenient. So it is probably something which is just beyond my reach, but I would love to do it. Mm. It would probably take me about between two and a half and three hours, and maybe that's not advisable when you're 85. <laughs> but maybe when you're 86, it'll be fine. <laughs> Unlikely, but I'll never, I'll never uh, dismiss the idea. <laughs> I never give up. No, no. I was going to say, it's all been very positive, but there must have been some sort of negative times in, in your swimming journey. Have, have there been any particular hairy moments that you remember? Or Probably the second time I did the peer-to-peer. -peer, it was one of those occasions which was very rough, and it probably shouldn't have taken place. It's always a very delicate balancing act if the weather is dodgy to work out whether it's going to be safe or not to do. And on that occasion, it wasn't particularly. Another one, and I had a very anxious husband waiting at Shanklin for me. Another one was when we swam from, to celebrate the, 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 selenium, the millennium, we swam from Yarmouth, the green, to Gurnard Sailing Club. That was eight miles. Well, half the the um, people doing it, there were 24, managed it because the tide changes. And the rest of us were picked up round about Thorley, Thorness, um, on the support boat hmm. because it just wasn't possible to do. But that was another one where it was a little bit dodgy and I had a very anxious husband waiting because I didn't land at Cowes and he didn't know I was on the boat. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, that does sound worrying. And just remaining on the slight negative for just a moment, have you got any sort of regrets at all? My only regret really is that I didn't start sooner and have some sort of experience when I was younger, but I wasn't. I was playing hockey and tennis and badminton and it never occurred to me to do competitive swimming. I was just encouraged to do that much later in life. But I have no other regrets, none whatsoever, no. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. In a few weeks, I'm um, taking part in the peer-to-peer, -peer, which I believe... Are you, are you doing it this year? I am. I do it every year. I've done it since I was 60. 60. And for those that don't know about the peer-to-peer, -peer, how would you describe it? It's a swim from Sandown Pier to Shanklin, which is no longer there, but we still call it the peer-to-peer. It is just under two miles, but it's tidally assisted so that it's quite a quick swim and it's very pleasant. In all its time, I think it's only been cancelled due to COVID. Also, I think there was one year where the weather was just too bad and there was another year where the weather was bad on Friday, turned out on Saturday okay. And that was one of the years that I was running it which I did for five years because the club at Sandown, which no longer exists, used to run it. They ran it for years and years and then their chairman went off to live on uh, abroad and asked us if we would do it. And so with my very supportive husband, who would be on the computers doing all the results, we ran it for five years. Unfortunately, it's still running and it's going from strength to strength. It's always oversubscribed. Very popular swim. Yeah, and next year I think it's celebrating its 70th anniversary. 
Well, I didn't realise that. I knew it was 60 odd years. <laughs> yep, 70 next year in 2024, I believe. And was set up as an informal competition between the longshoremen and the fishermen at Shanklin as a challenge. Ah, I didn't know that. <laughs> and it's been run ever since and become more and more competitive in that it's now run in age groups and some people are very competitive, others just do it to say that they did it. Mm -hmm. Excellent. I was going to say, and, and talking of competitions, are, are there any other um, open water swimming competitions that you'd recommend people take part in? Well, there is a national masters one, but that's up near Sheffield. It has been in various locations. Not sure whether I shall make it this year because transport's always difficult. There is also a regional one, which is usually in a water sports centre in Chichester. I'm not sure where that is this year. That's quite a nice one. And the distances vary from usually 1.5 to 3k. Excellent. Thanks. Okay, so all this all this swimming must have uh, taken up an awful lot of time. What what are your family said about it or are saying about it now? Well, basically, I didn't start it really until the family had all left home. And I'm not sure whether they think I'm mad or whether they're proud of me. They don't say a lot. They're boys anyway. Um, my husband is very supportive. But again, it's, um, he will come with me if I'm going any distance and he loves the foreign trips. He's had his own life of sport. We met through sport. We met on a badminton court. Yeah. So we've both had our own sport. I had a break for bringing up the children, which I didn't present at all. Encouraged them all to learn to swim. And... Uh, it's just been a life of sport in this household, really. Mm, how lovely. <laughs> so there's no problem. I do get a little bit of um, comments about how much time I spend, but I don't spend that much. Some people go every day, very dedicated. I'm not. If I get thrims, three swims a week, then that's a bonus. Excellent. Yes, I was going to ask you, you know, anything else about your your sort of training schedule and whether you have any advice, certainly for me, you know, to get getting the balance right between training enough and not wearing yourself out. I think you just do what you're comfortable with. I'm very lucky to have the physical fitness to be able to do it. Most grateful for that. And I think you just do what feels right for you. I could train much harder than I do with the masters and wear myself out but I can't keep up with the younger people so I just do what is comfortable for me and I was very surprised to better my times because I mm. haven't really worked that hard for it. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you and you were saying uh, well who would you say have, um, have inspired you in your swimming over the years? Well, first of all, I mentioned Vivian Cherryman, and then there was Shirley Miles, and the late Ron Smith, who was chairman of the the West White Club. And then there are a number of swimmers that I meet who say, oh, I wish I could, I hope I'll be swimming when I'm your age. Mm. Um, the word inspirational comes up far too often. I don't feel I'm an inspiration, but <laughs> I'm very, very fortunate to mm. be well enough to, to do all this. It isn't cheap either. That's another thing for which I'm most grateful. Mm. But I still teach, and I always say that whatever money I earn teaching plows straight back into the cost of hotels, <laughs> rail fares, entry fees, etc. There isn't a lot of expense in kit, unless you're an open water swimmer, which then, or a winter swimmer, then you need all sorts of kit. But basically, it's it's quite good in that respect. Then, of course, it's cost of eating when you're away, so it's not cheap. But I'll do it while I can. Mm. 
Excellent. And did, and did you want to say anything more about um, when your time at West White and how they supported you? Yes, I, I, as a parent, they saw me through uh, getting in the pool myself and racing in their local event, the club event. And then various other people came along and we moved into things on the mainland. And then eventually I founded the Masters Club, which operates from the Heights Pool. And I had a lot of support there in how to run a meet from various people I knew. Um, yes, you can't do it without support from others. Mm. And talking of supporting others, last time I came round, you were raising funds for, for Macula. Do you want to, can you tell us a little bit more about that and about your fundraising over the years? Well, I was diagnosed with macular disease 10 years ago. And unfortunately, there's no treatment for the dry macula. Hopefully, the fundraising I do will go towards finding a cure or a treatment for the dry form, which causes blindness in older people. I've been very, very lucky because it then turned into the wet version, which means there's little bleeds in the back of the eye, which are zapped with injections. And a lot of people are very fearful of those, but it's really always worth the momentary um, experience of pain. And so I've set myself up to raise funds for them, and I get sponsored for Swimming in the Serpentine, and people are very generous. Over the years, I've raised several hundred pounds. And also, I have my garden open, which raised mm. raises over 300 pounds this year, Yeah, which I shall be sending up during Macula Week, which is during June. So I'm pleased to be able to plough something back into society for what I consider to be my passion. <laughs> Yep, that, that's amazing. Thank you so much. I think I'm going to let you go in a little moment. <laughs> Thank you for all your time and for continuing to be an inspiration to all of us, um, certainly all of us swimming in at Ride at the moment. Um, have you got any final thoughts about swimming and about the way things are going? Master swimming in particular is becoming more and more competitive as I mentioned earlier, there are qualifying times for the bigger events. And because so many swimmers are now involved in master swimming and in open water swimming, especially since COVID, I think it is going to only go one direction and that is up. And it will be difficult for some people to compete in the bigger events. There are lots of local events which um, are also interesting. Um, from my own point of view, at my age, I haven't got to worry too much because qualifying times are quite easy. I did say I'd like to swim into my 90s, but I'm not sure. <laughs> I think it all depends on the health of myself and my husband and generally the situation that we're all in. Mm. And, and any advice that you would give to others who are... Who are, yeah, any advice generally on, on anyone who's thinking perhaps of becoming a competitive swimmer in later life, perhaps? Well, the advice that I had when I started at 50, which is a bit late because I'm competing against people who I regard as real swimmers. They were champions in their youth. And when they're in the pool with me doing the same event, I do not get the gold medal. I'm very happy about that. But um, in terms of encouragement, I was told, look at this list of results. Start at the bottom, not at the top. You've got ex-Olympic swimmers up there. Start at the bottom and work your way up. And for people thinking about going into competitive swimming, do it. It's great fun. It keeps you fit. And I would say... 
it's the best sport because there's very few th things which prevent you from swimming physically. Thank you. And very final thought, it might feel like a repetition, but why in summary do you love swimming? I often ask myself that. I'm swimming 3K somewhere, plodding through the water, thinking, why am I doing this? I think it's because I know I can. And I'm very, very fortunate. And I just love it. And I love encouraging other people to get from it what I have got over many, many years. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jenny. Thank you for your time. And I'll see you down on the beach sometime soon. Bye. -bye.